All right. So people keep on telling me that Rubik's Cube mosaics aren't real art. They keep on saying that's just something people do on TikTok. And they ask me, they say, Ashton, you know, where's your Mona Lisa? Where's your Sistine Chapel? Where's your Pablo Picasso? And finally got me thinking, you know, us mosaic makers, we could get our shit together. You know, prove that we're not just something that speed cubers do in their off time. So as the world's leading Rubik's Cube expert, extraordinaire, doctor, I thought a good place to start might be a formal education. So I'm going to start off with the basics and then maybe later on we'll get into the real nuanced stuff of like the best cube brand and model to use and which software program to use and why. But today I'm just going to start off with colors and just give you the basics, you know, like uh, how the colors come together to make the mosaic art. So let's get into it. So like the first cube that came out had these six colors and almost every cube you see has these six colors so this is what we're mostly going to use when we're making art i mean you have some weird cubes with designs or custom stickers but most of the time it's white yellow orange red green blue um, when we're making the mosaic art though a lot of the times we're going to not use green because it sort of just doesn't blend with the other five colors as well as they blend together and some people will replace that with black because it's sort of like a cheat color um, if you add black, you could sort of make more accurate images easier, but it's sort of not classic. But if you wanted to do it, like, uh, people will sharpie over the green or get black stickers or literally just peel off the stickers because the plastic's black anyways. Um, here to show, like, why we, a lot of times we won't use green, we got Johnny Depp here, and you see, like, blue and the other colors, um, they just blend pretty well, uh, so here we don't have green. We happen to not have orange either, but that's besides the point. The point is like blue and the warm colors, they come together pretty well. And then on the left here, after you add green, it's sort of just rainbowy. Um, this lady, she happens to make it work because she's more of like an abstract piece. But mo most of the time we'll get rid of green unless we actually are doing something in green. Um, and here's the show sort of why people will use black. Um, here we have the sixth god. You see on the left here, like green doesn't fit in great. Um, it can help you add more detail, but it doesn't do a lot of help in terms of shading. But black, on the other hand, gives you like another darker color. A lot of times in real life, you know, your shadows are black, and particularly like this album cover was in black, so it turns out a lot better. So you replace green with black, and that becomes your new darkest color. But like um, my cubes that I tend to use, um, the shade of green is pretty dark. So that becomes my darker color instead of blue, and you could sort of get away with doing more shading that way. But most of the time, uh, you just won't use green, and blue will be your shadow. Um, so I have the colors here again, and they're in this order. They're ordered from brightest at the top, your white to darkest shade at the bottom, blue. And to sort of show that, I'll turn them black and white. And you see how they just get darker and darker as you go down. So it starts off white, and then in your next darkest is yellow and then orange, and then red, and then green, and then blue. And so to show you how that ends up coming to make a picture, um, white will be your highlights, um, and then you sort of know, you'll see this a lot where it'll go down the spectrum, so yellow is your next darkest, and then orange, and then red to do your shading, and then your shadows and stuff like that will be in blue. Um, here I make her black and white, so you could sort of like put that together more so I mean the the brightest parts are white and then it goes down the spectrum as the colors get darker and then there's some other rules that apply to like your more 8-bit um, smaller type of stuff um, your black outlines are going to become blue most of the time because it's your darkest and then you're sort of just hoping to find stuff that has the Rubik's, the other colors of the Rubik's Cube because you're you're not doing something big enough where it's like you can sort of just make it the Rubik's Cube colors and pretend it's black and white. Um, here on the Bugatti though, like the shading still applies. So white's your, your highlight, like the green on the, on the windshield here. And then it goes down that spectrum, orange, red. But then we have yellow on the back half to sort of so, show that that's the brighter side of the car. And then green comes in just because we need a little bit more detail. So we needed a sixth color. Um, and same goes for like your cartoon characters. Like Snoopy is normally black and white, but we change black to blue and it turns out pretty good. 
and then you're hoping for stuff that is in the cube colors because that'll always turn out pretty well. So Maggie is normally yellow, so that turns out fine. And then everything else can become red and it looks pretty close to the original. Um, and same with the shading applies for inanimate objects too, not just like portraits. So here we have a sphere which shows it pretty well. Like normally when you were to draw a sphere, you'd like have uh, a highlight on one side and then you just get darker and darker and darker until the bottom to give it sort of the 3D effect. Um, but with the cube, we just have colors. We can't really do shading sometimes, so we just go through that spectrum. White being your brightest, then yellow, orange, red, and then green we needed because we need another color, and then the black of space becomes blue. For logos and anything like that, um, same applies. You're hoping to just find something with the Rubik's Cube colors, so like the Patriots logo turns out pretty good. And then the, the Ferrari just has black and then the other colors are on the cube. So that usually turns out pretty good. You just change the black to blue. And then same for flags or here's another cartoon character. Um, the flags that don't have the Ruby's cube colors, you can't really do, it's not gonna look right. But the ones that do, like it turns out fine. And the last sort of concept uh, to talk about in terms of colors is dithering. And that's um, sort of using two colors to make a different color or at least to, to give the impression of a different color. So here we have blue and red, but you'll see as I sort of make those pixels smaller and we zoom out from the image, your eye stops to be able to make it out individually and it just becomes purple, basically. Um, and then like that, that sort of concept ranges infinitely. So here, like to that pattern, I added a bit of white and the purple becomes lighter. I mean, if you added more white, it'd become even lighter and then if you add blue, it'll become a darker purple here. Um, and it works for any two colors or even any three, four, or five colors. Um, you can make some shade of some color. So uh, here, white and any color will just make it like a lighter version of that color. So red and white, we get pink. Um, and it really does work just like you're painting. So yellow and blue, just like if you're mixing paint together, it becomes green. Here it sort of looks like green. Um, and the same effect is used, like, whether you know it or not, like, your computer screens are made out of pixels that are only three colors, and these lights just are on and off, and that makes any color you see on your screen. Um, but you have enough of them, and you can, make, you can make the appearance of any color. So we have these three colors, so technically, like, you make a big enough Rubik's Cube mosaic, and you can imitate any color you want. So here on the left, um, th this image was, like, originally black and white, so dithering here is sort of used to just give a lot of different shades instead of just the six normal shades. Um, but you see how, like, it comes together and you end up being able to make a far more detailed image. This is 1,600 cubes, so you need, like, a quite a bit of scale to be able to, to use it a lot like this. But when you can use it, like, um, you can basically make, like, a, like a photo-perfect image. And then on the right here, we have this dog, and dithering is just used to shade. So right close to the dog, it's white, and then we just slowly add more and more blue to like, like give this highlight effect, and then it goes to the shadows. And in terms of color basics, that's about it. Um, I think maybe next time I'll talk about uh, just taking an image and making it into pixel art, so just making it sh like so few pixels, um, what program and software to use, etc. But other than that, that's about it. Thanks.